In this video, we are going to show you another activity with the same four bowls as we've used in the first two, but this one is a little bit different because we are going to be using money. Now, money can be confusing because the quantity doesn't match the size. So a quarter is obviously worth 25 cents. The dime is worth 10 cents and the nickel is worth five cents. This can be done differently. If you think that this is gonna be confusing, you can start with a quarter, a nickel, and a penny, and then the size will go down. So I'm going to assume that you know how to do that because you watched the second video with the Legos that were three different sizes. And I'm gonna move right on to the one that is a little bit more complicated because basically, you, if you did the second one, that's how you would do the money thing exactly the same, okay? Because you're really just doing it by size. But now we're talking about quantity, what it's actually worth. So this is going to involve telling the children that this is 25, this is 10, and this is 5. Now we're not going to worry about counting right now. We're just going to know that 25 is bigger than 10, and 10 is bigger than five. That's really all you wanna do for this beginning part. Uh, the same way that we did in the other two, you can either have them pick them up or use a spoon. Um, I'm gonna pick them up this time because then I can talk a little bit more about them. The spoon is kind of fun. This is also an activity that's fun to do with a lot of money because it's actually them doing something that might even benefit you. Maybe if you have older children, they could then count the money right away because uh, they would know how to count or they could make stacks of money and we've all done that. So those types of activities won't be that hard to explain. Um, counting money is a really neat thing for all ages because you can say that, you know, four of these is one dollar. This is just basic that you probably understand. So then children who obviously can count to four, which is all of your children, one, two, three, four, could make obviously a bunch of different stacks and then count the stacks and they would know how many dollars they have. It's a really, really fun thing to do with children. And um, you don't even have to talk about that four of these is a dollar, you know, 25, 50, 75, 100. That's really all you have to do. You don't have to go into any type of advanced math for them to understand that. Same thing with dimes. Dimes are really easy to um, stack into piles of 10, and then they know they have a dollar. And they can write down the numbers. It, you can do so much with money that's basic. You don't have to make it too complicated. Uh, but for this, like with all the videos, I'm showing you the beginning stage, the first thing that we do with the money, and then you can build off of it, like all Montessori materials. So the goal is that you're going to take something very simple, and as the children learn it, it's just gonna get more complicated. So for this one, the thing that would be the smallest is actually the nickel, is the five. So the five would go in here. The medium would be the dime or the 10, dime, the dime. We're gonna call it from now on the dime. It's worth 10. And then we're gonna take the quarter, and the quarter is the biggest, the biggest. The quarter is worth 25. And this is a good time too, to look at the quarter. This one's from Colorado, I don't know if you can see that. And, you know, just look at the money, see what's on it. It's always good too. It's always fun. It makes the activity a little bit more interesting. You can talk as little or as much as you want to. You can say, oh, look at that design on the dime. What do you see on there? What is going on on that? And plants and a torch? I don't know what those things mean. Maybe we could see if we can find out what those things mean. So you can do things like that, um, which makes it a lot more interesting and a lot more rich in things to do. Uh, pretty much everyone has a jar of money, um, you know, change sitting around, um, a lot of pennies. I didn't do pennies because um, in all honesty, in our home, 
we divide them up. We have a jar of pennies and then we have a jar of everything else. So that's why mine looks like this. Uh, so basically the same idea. You're just going to have the child take all of the dimes, all of the nickels, and all of the quarters and divide them up. Now, naturally, they're just looking at the ones that look the same. So it really doesn't. They're not really doing it at this point because they're even understanding quantity. They just see that the one that is this size in this picture is going at the top. And the one that is small and has this picture on it is going in the middle. And the one that is big is going at the bottom. But the same idea, you're just talking about it a lot. You're talking with them about why they're doing this. And again, you're going to go through all of it in the bowl. So if you do choose to do this with um, a large change jar, because kids love to sort money, they love it, um, just give it to them in small quantities at a time. Don't give them like the gallon jug or whatever you might have of change somewhere in your home. Um, you might just have like a mason jar filled and then pour a little bits at a time in. For this one then, because of that, I divided it up evenly for the first for the first time. So there's the same quantity of each. I just ended up with a lot of nickels at the end. Um, but that happens too. Um, but if you're just doing it from your change jar, they're not always going to be the same amount in each. Um, but the first time you do it, the very first time you're showing them how to sort money, just divide it up into the most simple way possible. So you're going to divide it, maybe have, you know, four quarters, four dimes. I, I like to, um, four nickels, just something like that, five, five, and five, ten, ten, and ten, whatever you think that they can handle. And then from there, they're really going to start getting it. Um, and you can talk more about what this means. So then you can do very basic math, right? I mean, so you can say that... Five plus five equals 10. Well, we know that one of these is 10. And I don't know if any of you remember um, worksheets, doing worksheets when you were in grade school where there was the pictures of the money and then which one did it equal. It's the same thing. It's the same idea, but it's concrete. So, um, and again, this is something that they can build off of. So you might, you know, then say, well, okay, we did this. How many quarters are in the bowl. And let's see, we have, count the quarters first. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, that was an interesting amount that I chose to have. Um, but this would be 25, 50, 75, 100. Well, 100 pennies 100 units makes a dollar. Again, probably should have started with pennies, but for this one, we'll do quarters, and they're all very smart people, so you can understand. But four of these is a dollar. You can just say it like that. Four of these is a dollar bill. Get out a dollar bill and explain that this and a dollar bill are equal, and then you'd make a pile. But we have a dollar and then 25, 50. One dollar and 50 cents. Six quarters is one dollar and fifty cents. That's more um, advanced. You're not going to do that with a you know a new three year old, but uh, it is something to talk about. So again, you're going to count the dimes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I didn't do this evenly either. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, let's make it six. Let's pretend we did it evenly. So um, we have six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you can say 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. And children love counting by tens. They love counting by tens. So counting dimes is always a lot of fun. So we have 60 cents here. And then nickels. Now, geez, since I didn't count these before I put them in my container, I don't even know how many I have. I probably do have a lot. One, two, three, I do, four, five, six, whew, seven, eight. Eight. Oh, wow. So basically, I went from, you remember, six to 
to seven to eight. So I, I could say that I did that on purpose, but I did not. Um, so again, this is counting by fives, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. So children love counting by fives too, the older they are. So teaching them how to count by fives using money works really well too. You can also make these little stacks and say, well, five plus five is 10, a little stack of 10. 10, 20, 30, 40. So eight nickels is 40 cents. You can talk about money. Money is really just a nice way to talk about basic math in set counting like that. So um, you can do that as easily or as difficult as you want. I should probably take out two of these. So um, you're going to, the, the concept is exactly the same as everyone. So it's going to teach them this way. So um, I'm going to do this video again, how I would do it exactly how I would do it for children. Um, and again, this is probably my favorite one for getting more in depth. So get out a jar of money and it's really the best way to um, teach your children pretty much any um, type of counting that you find fun too. Uh, and I, I think that you'll find you, you might do it with your younger children and your older children really enjoy it as well. Um, they might even help you collect money if you have different sources where you might be able to find change. Um, so, um, and you don't need a lot. You need a little or a lot. You can do it for as much as you want. So, uh, okay, so here we go. We are going to use, I really wanted to use this bigger spoon for something, but it's going to be really hard, I think. Just, I think it's going to be hard to see this money anywhere with a spoon because they're both silver. So we're just going to use our fingers, I think, for the whole thing. So, okay, so I'm going to pause and then I'm going to do it as I would for children. Okay. Okay, today what we are going to do is we are going to take this large bowl containing money and move the different size and quantity coins into the three smaller bone bowls. Now, every one of you has a little bit of change at home. That's what this is called, change. Change is different coins. So I've used a lot of words for the same thing. I've called it money because it's money, I've called it change and it's change, and I've called it coins. I think for this, we're going to call it coins. So we have three different coins. We have this one. Oh, that's a little gentleman on there, and there's a building on the other side. See that? And this one is called a nickel. A nickel. A nickel is worth five pennies. It's five cents. A nickel. It's worth five. The nickel is five. The next one is the dime. Hope it has a guy on it too. And on the back it has a little design. I don't know if you can see that. It's got a little design on there. And the dime is actually worth ten. Ten. So the nickel is five and the dime is ten. A dime is is the same as two nickels, because five plus five is 10. Five, 10. The last coin we're going to look at is a lot bigger. This one, oh, it has another person's face on it. And then on the other side, it has, oh, this one has beautiful arches on it. Very pretty, very pretty. The neat thing about quarters is they're all a little different. This is the traditional one, the eagle. You'll find a lot with eagles. See, I thought I had another one of the picture. Ooh. This one is from the Evergreen State. Oh, I'm getting off track. So I have five, ten, and then this big one that is twenty-five. Twenty-five. 25 is the same as two dimes plus one nickel equals one of these, but we don't need to do that yet. We are going to take the five coin, the nickel, and put it in the top. We're going to take the 10 cent coin, the 
dime and put this coin in the middle. Then we're going to take the biggest coin, which is the quarter, and we're going to put this quarter that's worth 25 cents in here because it's the biggest. And then just like everything else, we are going to take, remember what this one is? It's five cents. It's called a nickel. Oh, another nickel, five cents. It's funny calling that five cents. There aren't five of them. It just means five. dime. Do you remember how much the dime is worth? Ten cents. Ten cents. Put that in here. What about this one? The quarter. Where does it go? Here? Up at the bottom. Another quarter. Twenty-five cents in the bottom. Dime, ten cents. Oh, nickel. Oh, this one has some fancy color on it. Oxidation, I think they call that. Nickel, the smallest. Five cents. Quarter, ooh. This quarter is not in very good shape either. That happens sometimes. Ooh, but it has a fish on the back. 25 cents. Remember where it goes? Bottom. Another dime. All the dimes look the same. Same thing with the nickels. All worth five cents. All look the same. Even though they look the same though, they all have the date that they were made right on the side. It's hard to say, see. And some of them were made a long time ago. This one was 1989. That's fun to look at. It's fun when you find one from the year you were born. Quarter. A lot of this money is very old. Well, the quarter goes to the bottom one, 25 cents. Oh, another dime. Dime. Oh, one more dime. And the last quarter. Oh, Colorado. 19, oh, it says on the back 1876 because that is the year of statehood, I would assume. And then at the very bottom, it says 2006. And that is the time that this was minted, they call that, when it was pressed out. But that is that. So we have the smallest, which are the five cent coins, the nickels, the medium, which are the 10 cent coins or the dimes, and then the big ones, the quarters, which are the 25 cent coins. It's fun to pour them back into the big bowl like this. Because they make a nice sound. But it is also a lot of fun to count how much money that you have. And it's a lot easier to count how much money you have when it's sorted by size. And we can go into that later because that is a lot of fun. And that is how you sort money. Thank you. See you again soon.